What do you know? I know about everything. Um, how they, what, what spinner of they play makes you go what way? Um, that the Earth revolves around the sun. I know that I like video games. I know that Dustin loves me. Oh, yeah. And how do you know it? And because you are pretty. <laughs> mm, because I've been playing them for like, um, like a year. Because I would play them all day, every day if I was allowed to. Because of gravity. Because he serves me, and he loves me, and he does stuff for me different ways of knowing. We call these epistemologies, and there are several different ways that we come to know something, or several different epistemologies. There is empiricism, which means we know things because we have experienced them ourselves through the five senses. There is reason, which means we have come to know something and to do something through logic. There is experimentation, which combines empiricism and reason. There is revelation, which means that we come to know something through some manifestation from a higher power. And then finally, there is authority. We know because an expert told us so. So here's a life lesson for you. Maybe people disagree because they have different epistemologies. Maybe a conservative is using reason while a liberal is using empiricism to determine their beliefs. Or maybe even two people are using the exact same epistemology, but using different evidence. So what is the antidote to these disagreements? I think it's humility. I think it's open-mindedness. I think it's skepticism with one's belief. In fact, I think the antidote is the six values of grassroots research. Of all of these epistemologies, what do we use in psychology? Well, we primarily use experimentation, which again combines empiricism with reason. But we like to call it the scientific method. No, it's not really the scientific method. It's not like there's a formula out there for it. It's more a set of guiding principles that scientists use when conducting research. Now, I said earlier, there are no rules or formulas for the scientific method, but I'm gonna give you some steps to the scientific method, according to Dustin. Number one, we develop a theory to explain a phenomenon. Number two, we design an experiment. Number three, we develop a hypothesis. Number four, we measure some sort of an outcome. And number five, we refine our theory and replicate. So a good example of this is the rat maze experiment. So back in the 1980s and 1990s, there was a lot of conflict between two camps, two theories in psychology, the evolutionary theory and the behaviorist theories. The behaviorist said that all human behavior can be linked back to punishments and reinforcements, whereas the evolutionary people said that all human behavior is linked to instinct. And so what somebody decided to do was design a critical experiment. And a critical experiment is an experiment where if the outcome is one way, it supports one theory, whereas if it's another way, it supports a different theory. And so what they did was they set up a tea maze with a rat. And on the right side, they put some sort of food in there. And so they let the rat run through the experiment, and not surprisingly, it eventually found the food and ate it. Now the critical part came on the second trial when they put the rat back in the maze, this time without any food on the right or the left side, because the behaviorists would predict the rat would go right. Why? Because they were reinforced for going right before. And so if they were reinforced in the past, they will perform the same behavior in the future. Whereas the evolutionary people said it would go left. Why? Because their instincts told them that the food that was on the right is no longer there anymore because I already got it. So I'm gonna to go to the left. And so what did they do? Put the rat in there and what did the rat do? The rat chose the left. And this has all the essential elements of the scientific method. One, there was a theory to explain the phenomenon, either behaviorist or evolutionary psychology. Number two, there was a experiment design. In this case, the rat T maze experiment. Number three, there was a hypothesis. Uh, I don't know what the guy's hypothesis is. Let's say he was an evolutionary psychologist. He believed it would go left. Number four, measure the outcome. In this case, the outcome was easy to measure because it meant go right or go left. That's the only thing they had to measure. 
Number five, refine the theory and repeat. And I know that behaviors have sent, they used to say that all human behavior is punishments and reinforcements. Since then they have softened their stance to say that it is a strong component of human behavior, but not everything that goes into it. So psychology uses experiments. Does it work? Is the problem epistemology? Are we just using the wrong epistemology? Well, maybe. Now suppose we wanted to evaluate the degree to which yoga has spiritual benefits. In order to subject this research question to the experimental method, scientific method, whatever, what would we have to do? Well, we would have to randomly assign people to either be in a yoga group or in a faux yoga group. So we're gonna have to design a faux yoga situation where it has all the elements the exercise elements of yoga but is missing the spiritual aspects of it okay and then what we have to do is we have to find a bunch of people who have never had yoga before otherwise they're going to be able to recognize that hey this ain't real yoga likewise we're going to have to find instructors and train them in the two methods which means the two instructors can have no experience with yoga because again double blind procedure they can't recognize when they are in the faux yoga condition okay and then you have to make sure that the regiment is followed exactly. So you're going to have the exact routines. The routines are going to be pre-specified to control all extraneous variables and that sort of thing. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have to measure people on the outcome of interest. In this case, spiritual well-being. But you're going to have to write questions that ask that. To what degree do you feel more connected with a higher power on a scale of one to seven? Well, what if that question doesn't tap into one person's experience of spiritualness. Maybe their, maybe their spiritual experience has nothing to do with connecting to a higher power. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to pigeonhole people into one manifestation of a spiritual experience. Likewise, the instructors, maybe having experience as a yoga instructor is critical to the spiritual aspects of yoga. And yet we have novices training people to do yoga. And in addition, because we have to control extraneous variables, we have to have an exact routine. Again, maybe spontaneity is part of the yoga experience. And so at the end of the day, after subjecting this research question to the scientific meaning, have we stripped yoga of what it means to be yoga? And so at the end of the day, we're not even measuring the spiritual aspects of yoga, we're measuring something else. And perhaps that's one problem psychology is facing. To be human is more than a reductionistic view that people are condensable into numbers. Maybe we need to spend a lot more effort really identifying what behavior means to the people who are performing that behavior. So what's our take home message? Well, maybe some avenues in psychology can be studied with the scientific method, but sometimes coercing research questions into the scientific method may strip the research question of all of its meaning. Whatever the cause, psychology is broken. Well, that's depressing. So why am I saying this? One, I'm saying this because if you are not aware of the problem, you can't participate in fixing the problem. Number two, even if you don't plan on going into science, if you are not aware of the problems, you may be deceived. A lot of bad information out there and it takes a skeptical and humble and by the way grassroots research values to not be deceived because in science we know very little nothing is certain and perhaps we ought to mistrust anyone who puts too little or too much faith in science and so that once again leads us back into the core values of grassroots research number one protect humanity number two Seek truth. Number three, transparency and openness. Number four, skepticism, including our own claims. Number five, humility. And number six, dissemination. I think the future of psychology depends on the degree to which we adhere to the six values of grassroots research. And I personally look forward to a bright future.
Thank you. 